Hello everyone, uh, Nick from Jasper PIM here and today I'm going to be showing you the product section of the PIM. And I thought, you know, what better way to do that than to actually create a product and go through the entire process. And then what we're also going to do is push that up to a Shopify store at the end so we can see how all the information that we filled out turns out on the storefront. So let's go over here and let's create a product. And what I'm going to do for the sake of this example is create a bucket hat. So let's go in and let's create. And now you're going to be taken over to the product editing screen. And this is a really, really, really important part of the PIM. You'll see here we've kind of got two sections. The first section here is our main panels where we can go in and fill out various fields to do with uh, the product. And on the right hand side, we have things that we can add to the product. So like attribute sets, attributes, options, and then also relations. So this is where we can handle all of that as well. You will also see an unpublished and published button and also a clone button as well, which we'll get into later on in the tutorial. So let's go in, let's start filling out some information. First things first is we can go in and fill the SKU. So let's do BH001. Let's go in and fill out a short description and say uh, this is a bucket hat for sale. And then let's go into the long description and let's see as worn, nineties, your premium bucket hat for your enjoyment. Perfect. So we've got that in the long description. Let's go down and take a look at some of the other fields. We've got shipping notes. So uh, this is shipping internationally and warranty info, five year warranty. Let's see. We also have a brand field so we can go in there and this one I'm going to be assigning the Acme brand as uh, featured uh, in the Looney Tunes. And then we're also going to set this one to be visible to the front end. And what that means is when we send it out to Shopify, it's not going to be a draft. It's not going to be hidden. It's just going to be um, a, you know, a regular uh, product that exists for the user to go and look at. So let's update that information. And then let's go in and let's take a look at some of the other fields. So here's one for SEO. We've got a page title. So new bucket hat, let's see. For some keywords, we could put bucket hat, new hat. Meta description, this is a bucket hat. And then if we want as well, we can also put in the product URL. Perfect. So let's update that information. The next section is shipping. So we can go in here and we can put some in shipping information if we want. You see we've got weight of field, height field, and also a width field. So this is five by five by five, and then also the length of five as well. I'm not sure if that makes sense for bucket hat dimensions, but just for the sake of example. We've also got a little pre-order section here, so this means we can set a release date for the product if they have pre-ordering enabled on their storefront. Uh, so that's where we can control that as well. The next section is barcodes. So we can go in here and we can add a barcode for the product. And we also have a, a bunch of different types. So let's go in and let's add in a G10. Perfect. So now we've got a G10 barcode in there. And if you want to create more or delete, you can simply do so by here, deleting, editing, or creating up here. Once that you uh, fill in the barcode and choose the type, just hit the create button and you'll have a new uh, barcode for the product. The next section is tags, uh, very, very popular with our clients who are using Shopify. Uh, this is a way for us to now go in and put tags. So uh, design, high fashion, and hats. Fantastic. The next section is categories. Now. Right now what I'm going to do is actually go over to the configuration section on the left hand side here and I'm going to go into categories and I'm going to create a new category and I'm going to call this one hats. I'm now going to go back over to my product, go to the categories and I'm going to add the hats category to the product. Now the product is part of the hats category. For anybody that is using, say, for example, Shopify, categories are collections. So it's the same thing. We just call them categories, but those map out to categories on other platforms and collections in Shopify, just for anybody that was wondering. So this is how we can assign products to a category on the product editing screen. The next section is attributes. Now, attributes are a very, very interesting part of the PIM, and I did do another video on those. So if you were looking for some more uh, specific information uh, to how attributes work, I highly um, uh, uh, had recommend that you go and you take a look at that video. Uh, it's really useful. It gives you lots of different information on what's going on with attributes. But I'm just going to give you a quick example right now. So I'm going to go in. I'm going to go into attributes. I'm going to create one here. And I'm going to create an attribute to do with that, something to do with a hat. And I'm going to say um, hat designer. 
And this one, I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to create uh, a select box. So this means that I have two hat designers and when my users go in and fill this out, it means that they have to pick one of these two. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to put in uh, my name right here, Nick Jasper. And then I'm also going to go put in another one here. I'll put in uh, Bruce Wayne. Um, and there we go. We've got two names inside there. These are some hat designers. And now I'm going to go back over to my product. And I'm going to add my hat designer attribute. Now I'm just going to go over to the attribute screen and I'm going to select uh, my, my hat designer. So this one was designed by Bruce Wayne. Now, in a long and short, what attributes are, these are custom fields that you can configure to have extra information on a product. So the attributes, for example, sync with the meta fields inside of Shopify and then the custom fields inside of BigCommerce. And this is where you can control them from. And we have some really useful tools that allow you to group attributes together. Um, we also have some tools that allow you to split your attributes up into what we call different display groups that makes it really easy to view them in different uh, places inside of the UI. So I did another video on that one and I really recommend that you watch it. We've got a link in the description, so go check it out now. But for the sake of this example, this is the attributes inside of the product editing screen. The next section I want to show you is the asset section. So this is where we can upload assets and we have a couple ways to do this in this screen. We can upload assets via file by just dragging and dropping. Or we can also add an asset by a URL as well. So what I've done already is I've prepared a little image here of a bucket hat. I'm going to go in and I'm going to add this new asset. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to set it as the thumbnail. So this means now when I add this asset, this is going to be the thumbnail for that product. I could also, if I wanted to, disable this asset by default. And what that means is we're not going to send this asset up to uh your storefront for you. We're just going to be disabling it and this is an internal asset that you can store inside of the pen, which is also another really useful feature. But for the sake of this example, I'm going to set it as the thumbnail. I'm going to hit save. And now there you have it. We have another asset and uh, we've just added it in and it's now saved on the product. And then if we go and refresh right here, we are also see we have a nice new thumbnail as well. So that's the asset section inside of here. And actually, you know what I would love to show you as well, is I'm just going to go and I'm going to add this same asset in again. We'll have the other one as the thumbnail. We're going to save it. And now we've added in the second asset. So this is how you can add secondary assets. But what's great is you can also very easily switch. You can set one as the thumbnail. You can also change the sort order of the assets as well if you want to. So that's another really useful feature. So let's save the asset sort order. Let's set this one as the thumbnail. And then we can also edit the asset too and add name, description, and type to it. And this is really, really, really useful uh, for people that maybe want to have the merchandisers actually enter the title and alt text for images and have the developers just template that out onto the page. So for example, I could put uh, original bucket hat, cream colored bucket hat on a white background. And there you've got a really nice piece of alt text that's been controlled by the merchandiser and the developers just have to template that in. So that's the asset section of the PIM. Oops, sorry, one second. Rewind. And now they just have to template that in. So that's the asset section of the PIM. The next section I wanna to talk to you about is pricing. And this is one of my favorite parts uh, of the whole PIM for a couple reasons. The first one being that this allows you to control your uh, pricing for your products across all of your different storefronts. So, for example, if you're selling in multiple different stores uh, across the world, then you're going to be selling in different currencies and you're going to have channel connections set up to them in the PIM so you can push product information out. So, the way we handle this for pricing is this little magic field right here called the price base. So, if I go in and I put in USD, like so, for US dollars, and I say go here for 100 MSRP, 100 for the MEP, we'll sell it for 150, it cost us 90. Well, if I save that, what's going to happen is back over here in my channels configuration section, I'm going to go into my channel and I'm going to see the price base that it's looking for. And I'm actually going to change this right here to CAD, or sorry, USD. So I've saved that. And now if I go back over, this price is going to specifically send out to the channel that I have USD configured on the price base just like I did right here. So that's one fantastic part about it. And the next part that I like even more is the ability for you to be able to schedule your pricing. So I could go in here and I could say, you know, 100, 100. I'm gonna sell it actually for 130 this week uh, and it cost us 90. 
Okay, so we're actually going to be selling it for twenty dollars less. But I want this to actually trigger on the twenty sixth of October at around four twenty eight p.m. And I want this to end on the first of November. I'm going to put in the price base for USD to make sure that it goes out to the uh, my Shopify store I have configured, which is now looking for the USD price base. I'm going to hit save. And now a price rec uh, record has been created, but it doesn't show up right here because it's not an active price record. It's actually a future price record because I scheduled it. And the beauty of future price uh, future price records and scheduling your pricing, it means that someone doesn't have to stay up till you know 11.59 the night before where you want to change the price of something at 12 for a sale. No, you can set it during the day when everybody's at work and it means people can go home and spend time with their families and their friends rather than having to wait up and sending into a bunch of different Shopify stores or big commerce stores and Magento stores to change the price at 11.59. You can schedule it all today and then also for all of your different channels too by specifying which price base that you're using for that specific channel. The next section I want to talk to you about is the inventory section. Now, the inventory section uh, is very nice for getting a visual representation of the inventory on the product. And also, if you want as well, has the ability for you to update inventory. So very simply, let's say we've got 100 on hand, um, not on hold right now. And our location is actually going to be this one right here, this SP. And this is because we've configured an inventory location on the channel. So a very similar concept to the price base is that what we're doing is telling inventory to go to specific channels. This means if you have, you know, um, multinational store or international stores with different inventory locations, you can specify specifically which inventory counts are going to which Shopify stores just by specifying the inventory location right here and making sure that it matches. So let's go in and save that. And let's say that we've got 100 of these bucket hats on hand to sell. Now, the next section I want to talk to you about is product relations. And Product relations is really, really useful for doing different kinds of relations that aren't variants or parent children. And that could be things like upsells, things like cross sells. Uh, it's also a good way for you to do kits and bundling. But right now, for the sake of this example, and we will do another tutorial very soon that goes in depth about bundles, so definitely keep your eye out for that. But what I'm going to show you is just the example of doing a nice little upsell. I'm going to go in, I'm going to create another product. And I'm going to call this one the premium bucket hat. I'm going to go back over to my configuration section and I'm going to go to my relation types. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one called upsell. Once I've done that, I'm going to go to my relationship type cardinality. And now this is a very important part because this tells the product how it can relate to other products. Can it relate to many products? Can it only relate to one product? Can many products be related to many products? But for the sake of this example, I'm going to show you a one-to-one -one relationship. So let's click on that. And this is going to be our upsell. This is our product that's a little bit more premium and luxury than the original bucket hat that we have. And we want to be able to show this to the user on the page so that they maybe might go buy that one instead. So I'm going to go into my bucket hat. I'm going to go to the relations tab. I'm going to go to add relations. I'm going to find my upsell. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my premium bucket hat. And I'm going to add it. And now I have this product related to this one under the product relation type of upsell. And then what you can do is access that relational data from the product JSON, uh, which we then send out to your platform, which means that it can drive the logic of your front end experiences to create a much more immersive UI experience for the viewer that can also have different advertisements of different products that you might want to relate that you don't have to just do via categorization or also product variants as well. And now speaking of product variants, the next thing I want to show you is the ability to create variants inside of the PIM. And we do this in a very great way by using global attribute sets. So for example, I've got this bucket hat and I know that I sell it in three different sizes. I've got a small version, a medium version, and a large version. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to go to my options right here. I'm going to create one called size. I'm going to go to values. I'm going to go small, medium, large. Fantastic. Now what I'm going to do is go over to the option set section here and I'm going to add this one called bucket hat options. Now I could if I want to go and add other options into this option set other than what I'm about to add which is just the size. 
I could do for different colors and so on and so forth as well and be able to stack the options to create even more children or variants. But for this example, I'm just gonna use size because I only have one color of this bucket hat. So I go down to the bucket hat, I've created the option set, I'm gonna add it right here. I'm gonna to go to bucket hat options. And now you'll see that this new uh, tab is showing up called children. It wasn't there before, but it's showing up because I added the option set over on the right hand side here to the product, which now means that this product is gonna act as a parent product. And the children uh, tab opened up, and now I can go in and I can create variants of this product, like so. And the great part is, is I can go in very simply, click on it, and I can, you know, for example, change the skew. For this small, I can add different images if I want to. I can also price it differently. And I can also change the inventory as well of that specific uh, variant or child product. So this is where we handle all of that, that kind of relationship inside of the PIM. And then for any other type of custom relations that you want to create, you would use the relations tab right here. So yeah, so that is the main product editing screen. There's a couple more tabs I want to show you on the right hand side, but the reason before we do so, I'm actually going to get ready to publish this product out. And these next tabs have a lot to do with that. So first up is the activity on the right hand side. And this is where we can see all of the activity that we've had on the product. So this is me, Nick Spencer, and I've gone in and I've updated, I've auto created some child products and so on and so forth. So this is where you can get tracking of that. And this section right here, is where we actually turn the product on on the channel. And you see I've got a Shopify store connected right here. So first up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the children tab and we're gonna set all of the children to online. So that means that now I'm gonna be able to send out all of my variants. I'm gonna go back to the right hand side here. I'm gonna hit published. And then I'm gonna go over to the channels tab. So now the product has been published. Um, it is ready to go. And now I'm going to enable it on the channel. Let's go in, just trigger a full sync. Let's jump back on over to Shopify. And you will see that our bucket hat has been added in uh, with all of its information. We've got the title here, we've got the description, we've got the media. And that was how we could go in, we could edit a product and then we can send it back out to Shopify or your other platform if you're choosing uh, and manage and create it all from the PIM. Just want to say thank you very much, everyone. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video on products. We're going to be having a lot more coming out very soon on all the various cool features that we have inside of the PIM just to help you users get off your feet and off the ground running. Make sure you like and subscribe as well, please. Down the bottom is always, always appreciated. And uh, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or there's maybe some stuff that you'd specifically like to see. Just give us a shout as well. So thanks very much, everyone, and I'll see you soon.